Hey everyone, it's Kaylee here for Microsurvey and the next couple of videos I do are going to be highlighting the enhanced surfacing capabilities that are available to Microsurvey users in Survey Tools for BricsCAD. So in today's video, I'm going to take a couple minutes and I'm going to show you how to create a surface from a drawing that contains Microsurvey points. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the surface, we're going to do a few edits, um, and then we're going to customize some of the visualization options, and you can see how easy that is to do within the BricsCAD interface. So without further ado. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up Survey Tools for BricsCAD. I'm going to select the Civil Design Workspace. And then when the microsurvey project manager pops up, I want to browse to the drawing that contains the microsurvey points. So the data set that I'm using for our example today is a topo that was done at a golf course. Um, it was just one section that was very rough and it needed to be regraded. Um, so we're gonna have a look at it today. So once I open up the drawing, the microsurvey configuration options uh, utility will open. Um, these are already preset, but if they weren't, this would be your opportunity to make sure this was all appropriately set up. So the first thing that I want to do when I'm bringing in a data set that contains a large amount of points um, is turn on my independent point numbers. So if you're familiar with microsurvey, you know what these are. And if you're not as familiar with microsurvey, well, I'm about to show you now. Okay, so you can see that the default configuration for the text on each point is we have the elevation, the point number, and the description, um, and they all come in um, scaled appropriately, which is nice, but the issue lies in when you're fully zoomed out, you don't see much detail, um, and then you have to zoom in very close to the point to actually be able to read the information. Um, so what IPEs do and IPNs and IPDs, let me get these turned on here and show you what they can do. So independent point numbers, um, elevations or descriptions, AKA IPNs, IPEs, IPDs, um, are annotation that go on the point node, but it scales dynamically as you zoom in and out. So you can see when I'm zoomed all the way out, I can still see the information for each point and then as I zoom in, the text zooms in as well. So I can still read all of the information regardless of how far in or out I'm zoomed. Um, so where this comes in particular handy is areas like this where I have two points that are very close together, pretty much on top of each other. Well, with IPNs turned on and you're zoomed right in, you can see exactly what is what, even if you're zoomed in like within a centimeter. So super handy. So that's pretty much it for IPNs. It's a very unique and useful microsurvey feature. So moving on, because these are microsurvey points, not only do you retain your IPN functionality, but the points are maintained in the microsurvey database, your point database. So if you open up your active coordinate editor, um, you're able to view and make changes to all of your microsurvey points um, right within that utility and you still have access to a variety of other microsurvey point functionality as well. So there are a few things in this data set that I don't want included in my surface, but we'll deal with that um, after the fact. So I'm just going to select everything um, on my screen. I'm going to go over here to the Civil Explorer, right click on Tin Surface, and then hit Create. One thing I will have to define is because I had points um, and break lines in there, program is going to ask me how to handle the break lines. I'm just going to keep it simple and call them break lines. So I'm just going to type in B and hit enter. Okay, so you can see that my surface has been generated. So now that I have that, I'm going to turn off my IPNs because I don't think I need them anymore. Um, and I'm going to have a look at some of this data. So I've got um, this one little surface up at the top, which is my little lake. I guess I'll leave that there but we uh, we don't want it connected to the main surface because there's uh, not enough intermediate data um, to do that. So. so the topic of this video is not um, editing a surface, it's just creating it. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time here. I'm just gonna quickly delete some lines and tidy up this surface, uh, but 
Tune back in for my next couple of videos in this series and you will get some tips and tricks on how to efficiently edit your surface. But right now, I just wanna get this surface looking like an accurate representation of the on-site terrain. So here you go, here is the lay of the land. You can see the break line I had going down through the middle of the field that was basically the low point or the drain that kind of ran through the whole area. So now I'm gonna spend a minute and show you guys how to customize your surface in the Civil Explorer panel. So as you can see here on my left, I have this rectangle called the Civil Explorer panel. If I expand tin surfaces, you'll be able to see the surface that I created here and the default naming just calls it surface one. You can see we have this bottom half of the panel that gives us a few different options for customizing our surface. So first things first, let's change the name. All right. So the next thing I wanna do is go over here to the last panel, which is the visual styles. So once I open up the visual style section, first thing you're going to notice is I have uh, the option to toggle on um, some of the main visual elements of the surface. So we have the boundary line, the points and the triangles. Okay, so let's see what the contours look like. So first things first, I just want to go down here and toggle on enable contours. And then the next thing I want to do is turn off my triangles and turn on my boundary. And that just encapsulates the work area very nicely. So the next thing is to determine how I want my uh, contour intervals defined. So because this is a small area and it's relatively flat, I'm going to set some smaller intervals just so we get a more visually striking uh, surface. So, so I am going to change my intervals to two meters and a half a meter. And that gives me a fairly nice uh, gradient. Then I'm going to change my colors. All I have to do here is select major contour color and then go in and choose whatever option I want and then go into minor contour color and then I can choose whatever color I want the minor contour to be as well. So there's a couple other visual styles that are available here as well. I'm going to save those guys for another video so I can properly do them the justice they deserve. So the last thing that I want to do on my surface here is um, I just want to get rid of the break line and point data that is still showing up underneath. And I just want it to be a nice display of my contours. So all I have to do for this is just freeze that layer. And there you have it. We have a beautiful contoured surface. Well, that's it for today, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed seeing how easy it is to create a surface for microsurvey points in Survey Tools for BricsCAD. And I hope that you can tune in to my upcoming videos and see me go even deeper into the enhanced surfacing functionality that's now available in Survey Tools for BricsCAD. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.